It's one of those nights in Milwaukee where you're thankful they have a roof on this building, a retractable dome at Miller Park in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And there's a light sprinkle on the outside, but we are dry as can be on the inside. Reds and Brewers in the first at three and a kickoff to a six-game road trip. Hi again, everybody, alongside Chris Welsh and Jim Bay. He'll be along shortly. I'm Tom Brennan, and welcome, as always, to Reds baseball here on Fox Sports Ohio. And it's becoming quite the treat every five days, Chris, to watch this young right-hander getting the ball tonight for the Reds in Rysele Iglesias. Well, a lot of people that watch him in spring training, Tom, really were impressed with his mound presence, his ability to change speeds, throw strikes. Well, all of that is enabling him to be very successful here at the big league level like his last time out. Don't ask the Arizona Diamondbacks whether they want to face him again. He struck out 13 in the seven innings in which he pitched. Somehow he was saddled with the loss in that ball game, even though he only gave up one earned run. But this young man, he just has a good feel for pitching. A good arm, 94 miles an hour, changing speed. You look up pitching, Rizal Iglesias' picture is right there under the, under the definition. And look what he has done here in the month of August. This will be his final start in this month. Well, that batting average against, as you see that at the very bottom of your screen, that number right there is the best in Major League Baseball when it comes to all the pitchers that are pitching up innings to qualify in the month of August. So he is really raising the standard for himself and the bar of expectation for all of us because now we've gotten to the point where when we see him on the mound, we expect a lot of zeros on the scoreboard. Meanwhile, it's been a very good rookie season since being brought up for Taylor Youngman. He didn't come up until sometime in June. He's only 25 years old, very much like Iglesias, a young pitcher. Hasn't been around very much, but man, oh man, those numbers are good right now. A 266 uh, earned run average, a low opposing batting average. He's a big guy. He does it differently than Iglesias. We'll get in that during the game. But he's a guy that can fool you with a big old curveball, especially right-handed hitters. You better watch this baby coming because it is a very tough one to hit, as the Reds found out back in July when he was in Cincinnati. So we'll see if the Reds can get off to a good start here tonight. And when we come back, Jim Day. Caught up with Joey Votto before the game today to talk about what makes Joey go in Milwaukee. Jim Day is standing by with that after checking in with Joey. You're watching Reds baseball on Fox Sports Ohio.
National Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. Buy Chevy. Check out their award-winning lineup only at your Tri-State Chevy dealer. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good? It's Skyline time. I'm Jim Day. If the Brewers and Reds are going to get back to respectability over the last month plus of the season, they're going to have to do it against the toughest remaining schedules. Reds, Brewers, Rockies, and Orioles have the toughest go. And the Reds by far have the most games versus teams over 500 at 27 left on that schedule. Now, of course, in the National League, the top three teams hail from the National League Central. And per usual, over the last month of the season, you play mostly divisional opponents. So therein lies the tough schedule. One guy that likes to play here at Miller Park is Joey Votto. And the numbers certainly back that up. No question about that. Votto at Miller Park ranks among active players. 322 career average, that's fourth best. 442 on base percentage, second best. And a 571 slugging percentage, also in the top five. He has 11 home runs here, tied for the most at any visiting park. And he simply likes the sight lines here and loves the hitter's background. It's one of the best in the business. Reds would like to get off to a good start on this road trip. Ryan Payne and the boys do battle next on Fox Sports Ohio. the coast i know they're kicking off back our way chris they certainly are Tommy. you know what it is in the cincinnati area on high school friday that seems to stop time and people head out to their local high school stadiums and weather's been cooperating it must be a nice night but hey if you're back from the football game or on your way back now you sit down you watch a reds game as they settle in against the brewers here for the first of three ought to be an interesting series other than the fact that these teams are both scuffling to stay out of the bottom spot in the Central Division. All right, let's take a look at Brian Price's starting lineup tonight, presented by Meyer. Brandon Phillips going to lead off, play second base. Brian Pena moved up to the number two old catching, and Joey Votto at first. Todd Frazier at third. A Eugenio Suarez in a five spot with Jay Bruce in right. De Jesus has done a nice job in left. Ryan Lamar, his first road start as a major leaguer, he's in center. And Rysel Iglesias on the mound against a 25-year-old right-hander. Seven up, five down. Very good ERA. Very good opponent's batting average against Taylor Youngman. Well, he's a former first pick for the Brewers. They got him in 2011. And when he came up in July, he actually came up in June, but 
When he pitched in July, became the first Brewers pitcher in franchise history to throw a complete game at Dodger Stadium. He's got a fastball around 93, 94. His next next best pitch is a curveball, and it is a good one, and he uses it a lot along with the changeup. So you're going to see really an old-fashioned type pitcher nowadays with a without a slider, without a cutter, without any other trick pitches. Really, fastball, curveball, changeup for Youngman. All righty, here we go. Brandon digging in, and he looks at a fastball up and in. Says the home plate umpire Tom Halyan, and this one underway. Dan Bellino at first base, Bruce Drutman at second, Alfonso Marquez. The umpire at third. The home plate umpire Hallion is the crew chief. A ball and a strike on Brandon Phillips. Both teams have lost 74 times. The only reason the Brewers are a half game in front of the Reds is because they have played one more and they have won one more. In the air foul territory. Lind over near the stands, and it's about five rows out of play. So Youngman in front of Brandon at one ball and two strikes. Unlike back in Cincinnati today, where nothing but blue skies and bright sunshine, beautiful day again back on the home front. It was just a cloudy, dreary day today in Milwaukee. Rain started off and on, very light. Late this afternoon. They appeal down to first, but that is certainly the, the beauty, as we well know, from all the rain we have had, especially when the Reds have been at home this season at Great American Ballpark, of playing with a retractable roof ballpark. Fans know when you buy that ticket, you're going to have a ball game. 2 2 pitch in the dirt. It's hard to believe any town in America would build a brand new stadium within the last five, six, seven years and not have a retractable roof more than Minnesota. Yeah. But you know the day will come. It'll happen one day. It's not going to be this year. But one day it's going to happen. And who knows? Maybe it will happen this year. I mean, they're only a half game out of the wild card, so it could be. But one of these years, it's going to happen where the Twins are going to make the World Series and there will be snow on the ground in Minneapolis. Popped up, foul ground. Lynn, nice play. Reaching into the Milwaukee dugout. Well, Adam Lynn, really more known for his offense than his defense, makes a nice play right there. Now, if you're in the dugout, you can keep him from falling in the dugout, but you cannot aid your player in any way in trying to make that catch as he leans over that railing. Well, he's looking over there to shortstop who uh, Gene Segura. They're yelling at one another across the diamond about that play from Lynn. Here's Brian Pena at 274 and 15 runs batted in. Well, we've talked about before about you never know, the ever so slight attendance differential. It's not so slight if you're counting up the dollars that come along with that differential between the Reds and the Brewers, and you can pretty much mark it down. It is solely based on the fact that they have this stadium which can close the roof within Clement Weather. Round ball to short, two are out in the end because obviously the Brewers are not a team that basically from opening day on has not been anywhere close to a good team, and yet they've drawn over 2.1 million fans. The Brewers on defense, presented by Floyd, changes from when we saw them last. No more Carlos Gomez, he was traded away. Third baseman for a number of years, Aramis Ramirez is gone. So Domingo Santana, talk more about him later. We've seen Elian Herrera down at third. He had a grand slam against the Reds earlier this year. That's when the two teams combined to hit three of them in one game.
Joey Votto looks at a strike. 305 batter, 24 home runs, 62 runs batted in. Yeah, 305 batter, but an on base percentage of almost 45%. 47 right now is where he sits. Getting a lot of walks. Well, you're not kidding. I just completed homestand. Votto had only six hits in 26 at bats. He walked a stunning 19 times during the homestand. 19. And once again on pace to lead the National League in walks for the fourth time. In five years. Well, if you're an opposing pitcher, why do you pitch the Votto? Especially in Cincinnati where he can hand out some punishment to you when the guys behind him are not swinging the bats hot. So if, if you feel better, especially as a right-handed pitcher facing a right-hander in the on-deck circle, why go after Votto? And that's why he's walking so much. Sort of a half swing fly ball that will drop in the left center field. I'll tell you. Domingo Santana is the center fielder out there, and they'll be the first to admit here in Milwaukee that he does not belong in center field. He went after that ball like he was a pitcher shagging balls in batting practice. I mean, he got a bad jump, didn't go after it hard, circled it up to make sure the lazy one hop wouldn't get by him, and Bottle serves a little sandwich in there. So Vito, a two-out base runner, and here's Todd Frazier at 263, 29 home runs, 75 runs batted in. Those latter two categories, both team highs by a pretty wide margin. Ball one away. Frazier, 12 hits and 41 at bats, did not hit a home run during the entire homestand. He did have five doubles. He's tied for the major league lead in that category, as well as being tied for the major league lead in extra base hits. Frazier knocked in two runs during the homestand. One and one. Reds have dropped 11 of their last 12. They had the nine game losing streak that finally came to an end when they beat the Tigers. Well, neither of these two teams right now exactly tearing it up. As you said, the 11 and 12 for the Reds, 12 or 13 also. The Brewers have lost four in a row, 20 of their last 30. But they have beaten the Reds four straight, even though the season series is equal five up and five down. Now, the last time the Reds saw the Brewers, they came into Cincinnati and just steamrolled the Reds. And if you remember when the, when the Reds saw the Brewers here in Milwaukee early in the year. It seemed like half the team was on the disabled list. Yep. And they had a new a different manager back then. Ron Renicky was more at running the ball club, and Craig Council has since taken over. Now the Brewers are 10 games under 500 with Council. Yeah, I saw Craig behind the batting cage today, and I said, You know, you're the only manager I've ever seen ever. That carries a fielding glove around with him. Those guys are carrying around fungos or maybe a notebook, maybe nothing at all in their hands. He goes, oh, you know, if I couldn't hit, I always knew I had to field. I think I could still do it. Probably could. He's in great shape. He looks like he could still play. There's a rocket by the third baseman Herrera in the left field by Frazier. Votto on to second. So after the first two are retired, singles by Votto and Frazier, and here comes a. Eugenio Suarez. Good job by Frazier there. Got a hitter's count, 3-1 count coming in. Youngman tries to throw him a fastball by him, and Frazier right there and puts a nice level swing on it. You know, sometimes what we've seen is this ballpark, Tom, works to get Reds out of slumps because they come in here and they seem to swing the bats well. Maybe Frazier will catch fire here. doing a little digging around before the game today and Suarez is down a strike you go back to the all-star break the only player on the Reds that has knocked in more runs since the break than a Eugenio Suarez is Jay Bruce now some might find that hard to believe with Bruce as bad as his slump has been 
for nearly a month. But the first 10 12 days after the All Star break, Bruce was red hot. But Suarez has knocked in more runs than Votto, and he's knocked in more runs than Frazier since the All Star break. Wow. And he, by and large, has not been hitting in a position that would warrant that. You're right. And if you paid any attention to the Reds lineup, you can see that Brian Price is trying. I mean, he's trying to get this offense going. And he's moved Suarez, who's one of the hottest hitters all over the place. From seventh all the way up to second for a while. Now he's batting really in the middle of the order behind Frazier and in front of Bruce. I mean, kind of interesting, really, if you're Jay Bruce, you're thinking, well, hmm, I'm a left handed hitter. I'm facing a right handed pitcher. I'm getting bumped down even one more in the lineup. And they've got a 25 year old rookie ahead of me. So, you know, Price is trying the best he can to, to put the guys in the right order. Oh, and two to count on Suarez, two on, two out. And he started to the pitch in the dirt. Votto breaks for third. He'll easily get there. It's good heads up base running there by Votto after an aggressive secondary lead. Well, you've got one of the best in the business behind the plate here for the Brewers and Jonathan Lucroy. I mean, it's a textbook attempt to block that ball, and he blocked it. It just kept it in front of him, but it scored it away far enough, and one runner was able to advance. He's as good as they get when it comes to framing pitches. You know, you look at his batting average when he comes to the plate, you're going to say, well, he's really having an off year offensively, but he still seems to be hitting line drives with the best of them, not falling in this year. Well, this is where the Reds could really pick something up if they get a run on the board early. Now, they have been so used to, especially in the series against the Dodgers, of looking up and by the first or second inning, you're down three or four nothing. Did he go? They appeal and no. Three balls and two strikes on Suarez after he fell behind 0 and 2 to start the at bat. All right, Youngman to appear over his shoulder as Frazier takes his lead. He takes off. And a swing and a miss by Suarez. Luke Coyle flipping down to Lind and it almost pulled him off the bat. Mercy. Red Strand two. And now we get a look at Rysel Iglesias when we come back.
Lineup reads as follows. Scooter Jeanette at second base. Jonathan Lucroy behind the plate. Ryan Braun and right. Adam Lind at first. Chris Davis in left field. He's been red hot in August. Domingo Santana in center. Elian Herrera, the third baseman. Segura at short. Young man on the mound. And red hot here in August is Rysel Iglesias. Well, you're not kidding about that. You know, and all the other starting pitchers, and they've had their moments of of some fine baseball, but overall since July the 31st, Red Starters are 5 and 16. Their earned run average is over 5 and a half, except for Rysel Iglesias. He has been dealing that earned run average coming down game by game, and maybe the coming off the best game he has ever had, seven innings of 13 strikeout, one earned run baseball, his last time out against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Well, you go back to the beginning of the month to start against the Pirates, six and two-thirds innings, only four hits and two runs. Got the win in that one. Then a start in Arizona where he went six innings, allowed three hits and one run. He lost the game, two-nothing. So on two starts against the Diamondbacks, he gives up two earned runs in 13 innings and gets two losses. In San Diego, six innings. Again, only three hits and three runs. Kansas City, seven innings, three hits, no runs. Did not get the win. That was a blown save by Chap. And then the start we mentioned against Arizona the last time. That ball out of play off the bat of Jeanette, one and two. Well, what you're really looking at with Rizelli Glacius is a finished product. I mean, normally when you bring up a 25-year-old up out of the minor leagues, and he did start the season down there. You're looking at a guy that is raw, that's just learning how to pitch. He's more or less a power pitcher that is trying to figure out what it's like to be here at the major league level. Well, Rysel's had a whole bunch of things to try to adjust to. One, life in America, as opposed to being in Cuba. And he seems to be at home on the mound. He just has a real knack for how hitters read his pitches and how he reads those hitters. Jeanette was one of those players injured. In fact, he injured himself when the Reds were here. He cut his hand open while at home. And he was going so poorly anyway, they sent him out of here to the minor leagues. Really is, is sort of a wake-up call that if you want to stay here from now on, you might want to focus a little bit better. Because, man, we saw this young man last year. He's a pretty good-looking player. Yeah. Been very hot of late. Three balls and two strikes on Studer Jeanette. Big round of applause for a fan in the front row. Made a real nice catch there. No glove. Here in Wisconsin, real men. Look at that guy. That's a Wisconsin guy. Caught that bad boy. Hands are boiler. There's ball four. Let's take a look at the Reds on defense. Presented by Ford. Lamar starts in center with Jesus in left, Bruce in right. Otto Phillips, Suarez, and Frazier, the battery of Iglesias. The guy always has behind a plate with him. Fellow Cuban. Ryan Payne. Here comes Lucroy. And Chris is certainly correct about the numbers. 248 batters, seven home runs, 32 batted in. Another player who, while the Reds were in town very early in the season, he took a, a foul tip, you remember, off his foot, broke a toe, and wound up on the disabled list, and that batting stroke which was so good a year ago it has just not been there this year lately is the best he has been swinging the bat this entire season he's been really swinging it three home runs six batted in the last 10 days You know, it's funny, 
You were talking about Luke Roy and what an outstanding player he is, not only at the plate, although down this year, but behind the plate. And in a sport of baseball where a lot of people are opening their minds to different ways to think about baseball or different ways to view players, whether it's you know, saber metrics or you know some of the metrics they have defensively, whatever the case may be. What I'm about to say, if you say it to a lot of baseball people, they will remain as close-minded about it as, as, as on any topic there could possibly be. But I say this with the utmost sincerity. If you have a guy that swings a bat as well as Jonathan Lucroy, why in the world would you keep him behind the plate? His season this year has basically been ruined. There's a line drive into left center field. It'll go all the way to the wall. And this will bring in a run. So after two batters, a walk and a double. one nothing. Now they have the runner going on the pitch. Jeanette took off as soon as the delivery was starting to go to the plate. And it looks like Iglesias just left one right there for Luke Croy. 2-1 count. Don't know if it was a hit and run or a run and hit. However they wanted to describe it. But Luke Croy picks up an RBI with a ringing double in the gap. Well, the, the easy answer to that question about Jonathan Luke Croy, Tom, is that he is one of the best in the business behind the plate. So... How do you replace him? Any, anybody else you put behind the plate here in Milwaukee will be a step down from what you have when Luke Roy is behind the plate. I, I don't disagree with you on that. I understand that. And I think the pitchers love to pitch to him. And again, I understand that. So, But at the end of the day, this is now the second time in the last four years that Luke Roy will not play anywhere close to an entire season. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it was like that whole experiment. And nobody would go on the record of saying it. But there were some whispers inside of the Reds organization that, you know, with Devin Mezzarocco, if you move him to left field, you're guaranteed this guy's going to start six days a week. You get maybe one day a week, maybe one every ten days. You put him behind the plate, he's probably a five-day-a-week guy. Sometimes six, depending on what kind of stretch you're in. But the beating that they take... Is it ultimately worth? And you know, I'm not making it. I'm not making an argument for it one way or the other. It's just that if you know you have the potential to have Jonathan Lucroy theoretically for 145 or 150 games, playing every day, at a position where he's not going to take a beating, does that not outweigh the idea of him playing 96 to 105 games, where you don't get his catching or his offense? Oh, no, you're right. And the way it's worked out is that the, the injury that he had this year was catching related. That's I can't right. remember the one a couple of years ago, whether it was catching related or not. But, you know, that's certainly something to, to consider. The question is, you know, just because he's been hurt a couple of times, I mean, when you break a finger, is it a, is it a, a bad luck or is it something that happens all the time to catchers? Well, like you said, though, you know, he broke his toe, took the foul. But the point is, he, your chances are so incredibly more likely to break a toe or a finger as a catcher than they are as a left fielder mm -hmm. or a first baseman. This is two years in a row now, Mezzarocco. Now the hip, I mean, he's basically missed this entire year. Last year, he didn't play in 115 games. He was on the disabled list twice. Now again, can you directly attribute that to catching? No, you can't. But your risk of an injury is far greater behind the plate. I think I, I think everybody would agree with you here. I, I would just happen to, you know, just sizing up the situation, eyeballing it only. Uh, I like Luke Roy behind the plate for what he does to that for that team, for the whole pitching staff. He lays everybody's game. And I think that whoever you put back there, you're going to have a poor pitching staff because of that. So now you ask yourself. That's part of the that's part of the information you, you have to consider as well. Well, right now Iglesias is having a hard time finding the strike zone, and you know we really not have seen him have a blip in his performances, especially in the month of August. But this is one of those games where the Brewers 
are swinging the bat pretty well. And he's digging himself in an early hole and Brian Price has seen this each of the last few games. I'm actually really surprised to see Adam Lind still in a Brewers uniform of all the Brewers and they've made a lot of trades. But this is one guy that was mentioned time after time after time as being a guy that they were willing and thinking about moving before the trade deadline and never did. Well, Pena came springing from the crowd's position. Trying to steal that one while it was fair, if it ever was fair, 0 and 2 to Lynn. Well, with all the hitting the Brewers did the last time they saw the Reds, no one was in a hotter streak than Lynn. He knocked in a run, and the Reds were part of that stretch in nine straight games. Iglesias with a chance to get his first out. And De Jesus get there. So walk, double walk, and now one away in the inning. You talk about walking batters, Chris. And not only has Iglesias not had a, a road bump in this entire month, he has only walked more than one batter in two of the five starts this month. And in those games, it was two and three, three being the most. Well, this is all about damage control right now. I mean, if he can get out of this inning having given up only one run, it doesn't matter how many pitches you throw or what you have to show them as far as all of your stuff and saving anything for later on. They said left center field off the bat of Chris Davis. This will bring in Luke Roy. Roy goes into second. And it's 2 0 Milwaukee. On to third goes Braun. Well, a very hot hitter. He's been very aggressive at the plate. He's hit a lot of home runs. Davis has uh, he has not had much of a run against the Reds in 14 games against the Reds he is hitting less than 100 but he gets a fastball that he likes right there getting to play every day and he's swinging the bat better I think that's part of the reason Davis has come around. Santana just 16 at bats. He's playing in his sixth game. Came over in the Carlos Gomez trade from Houston. Of his three hits, he has two home runs. Well, when they talk about Santana, he came over as one of the best prospects in the Houston organization. When Carlos Gomez went the other way, it was a six player deal overall. But, you know, this was the main guy in that deal for the Brewers. Tremendous power. They were they're comparing him to Vladimir Guerrero because he's very aggressive at the plate, swings in a lot of pitches and a lot of power to right field. That's where he really likes that slot. Began the year triple-A Fresno was tearing the cover off of it, was batting 320 in 75 games. He had 59 runs batted in and 16 home runs. Big dudes. Six yes. five, two and a quarter. He just turned a couple of weeks ago 23 years old. Gone swinging foul tipped into the mid of Pena for a strikeout for Rysel to away in the inning. Now you got a guy up there who's going to be really aggressive and you just keep peppering away at the outside corner that time takes a little bit off that slider.
Hitting on Herrera. Five home runs, 24 runs batted in. Big swing and a miss. Herrera getting his 43rd start of the year. First 42 split right down the middle. 21 at third, 21 at second. Sell trying to get through this opening inning. Brewers have touched him up for a pair of runs. Line drive caught by Lamar. Sinking liner to end the inning. But the Brewers get a pair and lead by two at the end of one. For live baseball, live look ins, in game highlights, replay reviews, stat cast, and more, get MLB.com at back for your smartphone or tablet. Brewers score twice off Rysel Iglesias in the bottom of the first inning. Few Reds fans here. Saw a few of them over at the hotel earlier today. Jay Bruce to lead things off. The Reds had a chance to score in the opening inning. Leaving two on when Suarez struck out with Votto at third and Frazier on at first base. A batting average for Bruce all the way down to 231. And boy, when that calendar turns to September, it can't come soon enough for Jay Bruce. Look at those numbers in the month of August. 137 with one home run.
Ball hit hard in the left field. That'll back up Davis to the warning track. And Chris, you talked about keep an eye on Jay Bruce here this weekend because he tends to come alive here against well, the Brewers. And the Brewers are the first ones that told me that when I went up to around their batting cage before the game. They thought we were talking about different players and who's playing and who's hitting and so on. And they said, hey, don't tell us how Jay Bruce is struggling. He always seems to come into Milwaukee swinging a hot bat and leaving swinging a hot bat. Yvonne Jesus with one away and Youngman the wind and the pitch and a fastball is high. 265 the batting average four home runs 17 runs batted in for Yvonne de Jesus Jr. Getting pretty regular playing time now after the trade. of Marlon Byrd. Schumacher's been out there from time to time. Brennan Bosch has missed this entire week after fouling a ball off his foot last weekend. That's a deep bone bruise. And boy, if you've ever had one of those, they are rough. It's the closest thing you can have to actually fracturing a bone is a deep bone bruise. Breaking ball drops in there a strike two and two on De Jesus Jr. That curveball that Youngman throws is a pitch that has served him well really from the time that he was in his amateur days. His high school won the Texas 2A championship in 2007. Then he went to the University of Texas. And when he went down to the University of Texas he was a, a really a star and a main guy in their rotation really right from the very first year. As a freshman, he pitched a complete game five hitter against LSU in the College World Series. Upon his eligibility as a junior, he was drafted first round number 12 overall by the Brewers. That's a one out walk to De Jesus, and a, here comes Ryan Lamar. It's a good at bat right there. I mean, De Jesus seems to grind out his yeah. at bats. I mean, you know, he's the guy that has never had a chance to play. On a regular basis at the major league level. And you don't know if he's going to get this chance again. But you might as well take advantage of it and show them what you can do. And at least from an attitude standpoint in the batter's box. Just don't make yourself an easy out. And he has been. Been battling hard up there. You know what he's doing. It reminds me a lot of what Christopher Negron did over the last couple of months of last year. You may remember. How about that pick right there by Lucro? That ball bounced three and a half feet in front of home plate. Wow. He'll come out for a visit. I don't know if that was just sheer luck or that's just one great pick. But you know, getting back to De Jesus, Negron played so well the last couple of months last season. When he came into spring training, he wasn't guaranteed a job with a big league club, but he looked so confident in the spring and played himself onto the opening day roster. And perhaps De Jesus is putting himself into that same situation looking ahead to next year. He's going to play a lot here the last month plus of the season. And he certainly has earned the right to get playing time. One and oh the count on Ryan Lamar and there's a strike. Lamar one hit in his first 10 big league at bats. I would have to believe his family has made the trip here. I mean, it's not a hop, skip, and a jump, but certainly a more than manageable ride. It would be an easier trip to Chicago, but of course, that's during the work week. That's really not a bad ride at all from outside Detroit, just straight across. Indiana into Chicago. One ball, two strikes on Lamar. And that missed inside a fastball to check swing. He didn't go around. 
Keep an eye out on some of the numbers around Major League Baseball tonight. Did he go? No. San Francisco Giants lost the first game of that three game series at home to the Cubs but came back to win the next two Madison Bumgarner winning the series finale the rubber game but the Giants still five and a half behind the Cubbies for that second wild card spot in the National League but now the Cubs will take on the Dodgers in LA and face Clayton Kershaw tonight. And the Giants will take on the St. Louis Cardinals later on. Mike Lee on the mound tonight against St. Louis. Pirates, meanwhile, are home against Colorado. A young man keeps throwing over to first base to try to send to Jesus back not because they're afraid he's going to steal but they want to shorten him up the lead. I think Youngman is setting up to throw a slow curveball right here. Same pitch he he struck out Suarez on up he goes with a fastball and gets a strikeout anyway. And it looked like that was a fastball that was out of the strike zone. Yeah, we were looking up numbers, Tom, just for fun, like you and I do. Math guys, anyway. And, yeah. And, and what I found very interesting in Major League Baseball this year, that on a 3-0 count, that Major League Baseball is hitting 367. And they've had 20 home runs on a 3-0 count. On a 3-1 count, that batting average is around 360. On a 3-2 count, the batting average is 207. Now the on base percentage is up around 440 because you get a lot of three two walks obviously but I'm stunned to know that the batting average on a three two count is just a horrible batting average. Right, now so, I'm, I'm going to ask you a serious question because that is that is fascinating. And, uh, those are serious facts. I, yeah. I would expect a serious follow up. Uh, I really mean this when I ask this question because you and I talk about this a lot. And there are some that have said that you know that. There's some of us, not you, but, but me, and there's some others that, uh, you know, we've not opened our mind totally to the whole sabermetrics idea, and that's just completely incorrect. I will say that I don't embrace it like so many others do, as Iglesias has gone on strikes to end the inning. But let me ask you a question and answer when we come back. Is a 440 on base percentage with a 202 batting average more preferable in the world of sabermetrics than a 350 batting average? You tell me when we come back.
batting average against in the most of a month of August. This is all pitchers. These aren't rookie pitchers. These are all pitchers. And take a look at the the names on that list and look who's number one. Arietta has been incredible. You know all about Bumgarner. Garcia on the comeback trail. And two of the very best with the Dodgers. 145 opponents have hit against Rysel Iglesias. And this will be his final start this month. All right, I want to get back to something real quick here. We're not going to use a three and one count. I want to find another count where the batting average is pretty good, but the on base percentage is significantly less. Okay? There's a little pop up to Brandon Phillips, and you were kind enough to dig around, and you basically found that that count being an 0 and 1 count. We're taking two strike counts out of the mix. Okay. On three and two counts, you said the batting average in Major League Baseball, the average, is 207, with an on base percentage of 442. On an 0 1 count, the batting average is 318. That ball line foul. So you're talking 111 points higher batting average, but the on base percentage is 325. A hundred and nearly 25 points less. In the Sabermetrics world, which of those two is better? Which would you rather have? The guy hitting 202 that gets on base 44% of the time, or the guy hitting 318 who gets on base. 32 percent of the time. Uh, I'll take the guy that gets on base 45 percent of the time or 44 percent of the time. I mean that, that's really what it's all about is not making outs. Um, it, it's just hard to compare counts because you know a 3 2 count is so weighted in the fact that you're going to get on base with a base on balls. I think the way you can the way you compare and compare players is what they do in the entire at bat. No, 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 I understand we're that. Just, we're just breaking counts down to see, you know, what a good hitting counts are. And I was just surprised to know that the three two count was a, a two hundred and seven batting average sure. on a three two count. I'm really stunned. I always thought from a pitcher standpoint that that was a that was a hitter's count. And, and it is when you consider the base on balls factor. But. No, no, no. I, I, I know what you mean. I, and I didn't mean to take away from the point you're making. If I did, I apologize. No, and I really wasn't getting into the, the whole count thing. I'm just sitting there saying to myself, because I'm really trying to understand this. But see, now, you said you'll take the guy who gets on 44% of the time. I would turn around and say, wait a minute now. I got another player who's hitting 111 points higher. Doesn't he have a chance to knock in more runs at 111 points batting average? We'll get into that. All right. We're back in a moment.
photo. Use hashtag Ohio Data Strong Fan, and you might see yourself during an upcoming telecast. It's brought to you by T-Mobile. All right, let's see if the Reds can get something going here. They're down 2 nothing at the end of two. They bat here in the third with the top of the order. Phillips, Pena, Votto against Youngman. Reds had two base runners in the first. They had one base runner in the second. Youngman is fan three, walked one, allowed two singles. There's a fly ball into short right field, and Jeanette with a pretty nice running catch. Well, outfielders play deep here at Miller Park, and I think infielders like Jeanette know that they've got to cover a lot of ground out there. I mean, Brian Brunge had just gotten to the spot and probably would have been there too late. Ball carries very well here. And it is not the most athletic and speedy of outfield defensively. Ryan Pena hit the ball hard, but right at the shortstop, Segura his first time up. Segura threw him out. This is only his third game all year, batting in the number two spot in the lineup. You know, he seems to have a knack for getting on base and seeing a lot of pitches and working the count especially being a good hitter with two strikes. Brian Price just continues to try to do something to get this offense going. It's this ball very hard but it'll back up Davis who makes a running catch. Two up two down coming up later on we'll have our Miller time moment brought to you by Miller Light. You know, Tom, that conversation we're having about, you know, what would you rather have the on base? I mean, I know it, maybe you're getting to the point. Do you want to have the all guys to just get on base or do you want to have guys to hit to get on base? And I think the, the hard thing about baseball is that when you start looking at all these numbers, you have to consider, you know, what are the hits that a guy gets? Are they doubles? Are they home runs or are they singles to the opposite field? And do they come with two outs and runners on base sure. or do they or do they just come when you know your team is up by 10 runs right and those, that's, that's why you know conversations like this happen all over the place mm -hmm. with people just trying to you know get their point across and sometimes you come up with a new formula that you read or hear about and you think well th th this is the, the one that ends all the conversation and the debate but there isn't one because there's you know there's the human factor involved too. And what a player does on the field and in the stat book is not necessarily what he does for his team all the time. And I think that's where I remember Joe Torre used to say, you know, don't forget that the baseball, the game of baseball has a heartbeat. So you can certainly use your advanced metrics and your formulas and your algorithms and everything else to, to try to project which baseball players are going to be the best and which had the best season. But when it all comes down to it. The only number that really wins is how many wins you have at the end of the year mm -hmm. as a team. And that's where you know general managers have a lot of different information input to figure out what is the most important factor when it comes to that. So Votto a single and now a walk. You know, it almost makes you wonder if Brian Price was sort of challenging because you know that, that managers and pitching coaches and players sometimes will read articles about another team in the newspaper. They're given this information daily. Daily clips of teams that are coming in so you kind of know outside of just numbers what might be going on with the team. Did a player get nicked up? Whatever the case may be. Along with your advance scout oftentimes. Price made reference to what just happened following the game yesterday when he was asked about Joey Votto as Frazier takes that one up around his neck. 
mercy. 92 miles per hour. Wow. Getting back to Brian Price for a minute, you know, he made the comment when asked about Votto yesterday, who walked a whopping 19 times on the just completed homestand. Brian Price said, you know, I know we have other guys in our lineup behind Votto that are struggling, and they've had a hard time knocking runners in, and teams don't want to get beat by Votto. But he went on to say, having said that, I cannot believe the teams with 4 nothing leads, 3 nothing leads, two outs in an inning, Nobody on are throwing four pitches a foot and a half away from Votto at the plate. He said it's ridiculous. And anybody that's teaching that philosophy of pitching, it's ridiculous. And a case in point, we just saw it. Yeah. There wasn't a pitch in that at bat that was anywhere near the plate. I'll bet you, without going back, and we can go back and look at it, I'll bet you of the 19 walks that Votto had on the last homestand, I'll bet you 14 of them came on five pitches or less. For sure, six or less. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of pitch arounds going on. Votto running. And Frazier pops it up. And this appears to be playable. It is, and the inning is over. One man left. Two nothing, no walking. likes that he's been able to do that but loves this kid's competitiveness. I think he just uh, has a, a very good feel for competition. I don't think he was overwhelmed by being here. I think initially he, he put a lot of pressure on himself to uh, to not be the, the starting pitcher where we were taking a step back on his turn. He didn't want to pitch like a number five starter or like a rookie. Uh, and I think that led to some big pitch counts and some learning opportunities for him. But he's been really our money guy. He and, and Di Sclafani have been uh, so good and so dependable for us. And they've pitched a lot more like veterans on a, on a club filled with the rookie rotations. And Tom and Chris, we've talked about this before. He's so competitive that they've had to work on the mental side of the game for him to turn the page because he is highly critical of himself when he has a bad inning or has a bad outing. And he has worked on that, and we can see him growing up right before our eyes. And, you know, getting back to Anthony DiSclefani for a minute, because yesterday's game was not on television. Here are his last two starts. He goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Zach Greinke. He gets beat 2-1 to one in Los Angeles and gets beat 1 to nothing yesterday. That young man should feel very good about this first full season in the major leagues as well. He goes about it in a different way than Iglesias. That's a good thing. But, you know, if you look at the big picture, you know, the Reds have five rookies in their rotation right now. They will not have five rookies in their rotation next year. You got Homer Bailey back, hopefully to anchor the pitching staff. 
And if you get two out of the five that are in the rotation right now, that stick and become solid members. And Iglesias and Di Scalfani are two that are really showing something. And then you get one more, and you don't know who it's going to be. But, I mean, John Lamb has had a couple of pretty good games. Uh, it, it's just too hard to tell right now. Sure. Sampson, maybe. Maybe it's going to be Holmberg. You really never know. Moss Scott. But, I mean, it doesn't mean that every guy, just because they're going to be run out there this year as rookie starters, that they're all going to be big leaguers next year. Some may be better suited for the pen. It could be Michael Lorenzo. It could be, uh, and, and some may not make it at all. But this is a, a proving time that, boy, there are just not many opportunities around baseball like the Reds are giving a whole handful of pitchers this year to get a starting job in the major leagues. For half the season. A strikeout to begin the inning. It's three in a row that he struck out until that ground out on the first pitch to Braun. Well, most times, rookie pitchers in a single season, the Reds will blow right by that, the final game of this series, because rookies will start the next two. How about that? Bear in mind, those others are an entire year. The Reds are going to break that record before the end of August. Adam Lind with two down. Nobody on. He popped up to left field his first time up. Iglesias is starting to settle in a pretty good groove right now. He walked the first batter of the game, allowed a run scoring double, then walked the next batter. Two hitters later, an RBI single. So two walks, two runs, two hits. And that single by Davis to knock in the second run was the last Brewer to reach base. You know, as I look in that dugout, and I see those three starting pitchers. We saw Sampson and Holmberg and, and Lamb sitting all together right there. And, and three rookies talking to each other. But, you know, over the years, we used to take a shot into a dugout. We'd see a couple of young pitchers sitting next to Greg Maddox or so on. And I, maybe when September comes around, it might be an idea the Reds are probably toying with right now is to, you know, to bring up a coach like a guy like Tom Browning or Ted Power, who's had great success idea. in the major leagues, just to sit around and talk these guys through a ball game. Well, that's a great idea. Well, you're on your game enough. Go head to head plus Marcus Mariota is in action tonight. Cubs face a Cy Young candidate for the second straight day. It's all on Fox Sports Live tonight and every night on Fox Sports One and streaming live on Fox Sports Good. 
2 0 Brewers. We begin the fourth inning. Eugenio Suarez to lead things off. And there's strike one as it's pulled foul. One ball and one strike to Suarez. He left 2 1 in the first inning when Youngman struck him out. This one in the air, short right field. Braun got a good jump on it and runs it down for the first out. So here's Youngman who went eight sensational innings, his only other start against the Cincinnati Reds this year. That came at Great American Ballpark. And now through three and a third innings, working on a two hit shutout. That game in Cincinnati all the way back the day after Independence Day. Eight innings, four hits, one run. He's only had two bad outings, really, since he's been recalled to the major leagues. One was in Colorado, where he pitched six innings, gave up four runs, and the other was his very last time out against the Nationals, where he gave up some home runs and only won four innings in that ball game. But heck, six innings and four runs in Denver is not a disaster. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, they got a pretty good crowd here tonight. I mean, let's face it. You have one team. It's 53 and 74. That's a home team. Taking on a team 52 and 74. That's a road team. Bruce lifts a fly ball to left field, and he's retired for the second time that way tonight. Saturday, September the 5th, join the Reds in celebrating Reds Toberfest. Be celebrating German Heritage Day. You know that's a big day you in better believe Cincinnati. It. The first 20,000 fans receive a red stein. Those things are sweet. Thanks to Hollywood Casino. So come on down to the ballpark. Brewers will be in town that weekend. I mean, what better team to play on a German Heritage Night giving away a stein than the Milwaukee Brewers? Right? Right on. Somebody was thinking ahead when they put that together. Yes. Of course, this is, uh, I mean, this is Miller beer country here now. Have you ever gone on that Miller Brewing? There's a liner to center field. That tour of the brewery over there. I'll tell you later. Oh, you were there just before the game tonight. Pardon me.
It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. All right, Chris, here it is. I asked you the question. Uh, have you been on a tour of the Miller Brewing Company? No, you, you know what? I have not. I thought maybe it would be worthwhile going on there tonight, though, after the game. <laughs> you with me? I'm in. Count me in. Bernie will drive us over. Let's hope Bernie doesn't safely do any, home. Let's hope he doesn't do any sliding tonight. No. One of the better mascots around, really. Yeah, and he's got a sweet, he's got a sweet setup up there. For those of you that haven't seen it before, I mean, it's big league setup now. He's got his own dugout up there, and then uh, whenever the Brewers hit a home run, he comes sliding down in celebration. It's pretty nice. Pretty nice. And if I'm not mistaken, doesn't he open the roof and close the roof from out there? I didn't know that. Maybe in why I don't know. I don't know why I thought that. One two pitch. Iglesias delivers and it's found out of play by Davis. This guy smoking hot in the driver's seat brought to you by Kia here in August all of a sudden getting a chance to play all the time. After they traded away Carlos Gomez and look at those numbers. Yeah. Well, he's had five home runs in the last six games. And Iglesias just blows him right away that time. Boy, Iglesias after that first inning has really settled down. And we've seen him do this before. We like this fastball at 94 so much running right up and in on Davis. He can't resist that pitch. That's our flamethrower brought to you by Cholula Hot Sauce. Well, remember the game in San Diego where he allowed three runs after the first three batters. And those would be the only three runs he allowed in six innings. Frazier, a strong throw in time to get Santana. That is a nice play by the Reds third baseman, Todd Frazier. Really nice play. I mean, he's got to go all the way over the line. He's not playing anywhere near the line. Backhand sets his feet, and boy, he's got a gun. Good stretch at the other end by Joey. Down the left field line, but foul. One and two on Alien Herrera. Ten in a row retired by Ricelli Iglesias since the run scoring single by Davis to knock in the second of two in the opening inning for the Brewers. Now he tries to put away Herrera. And make it 11 in a row. Which he does. My oh my. This young man is tuning it up. He is fan six. But is on the short end once again of a shutout.
wearing their old school uniforms. A little throwback. But nothing compared to what the White Sox did last night. They were back in 1976 when they donned the field with not only collared jerseys but shorts. Now they didn't go as far as the shorts last night, but they did wear the old school jerseys with collars on them, taking us back to the mid 70s. I don't know, guys. What do you think about that look? And should they have donned the shorts too? I think they look good. Yeah, I like it. What do you think, Jim? The shorts might be a little much, but I do like the jerseys once in a while, once in a blue moon. Yeah. It's like I love to see the Reds break out just every now and again, those sleeveless jerseys. I love those things that they wore back in the 90s. You mean the jerseys that were like trimmed a la maybe like Star Trek that the Dion Sanders yeah. had some input as to how they trimmed no, the No, no, more the just a straight, more just a straight cut. Oh, okay. You know, just the, 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 the best, best, the look, best yeah. look, yeah. Yeah, with a t-shirt underneath Oh, that's it. going way back to Ted Clue's time. Yeah, those are sweet. Love those units. These are the uh, throwback jerseys uh, tonight for uh, the Brewers. Boy, they had the old school jerseys on during BP today. They looked really good. Those rides uh, they used to wear back in the the wall banger days. Mm -hmm. Robin Yount, Paul Molitor, that whole crew that took on the St. Louis Cardinals in the World Series. In fact, when the Brewers were playing, of course, in the American League, champions of the American League in 1982. One two pitch on Iglesias and he's gone. Nope, popped out of the middle of the catcher. Still alive. One ball and two strikes. Iglesias next, I beg your pardon. Ryan Lamar the batter. Lamar struck out swinging his first time up. We'll see if the Reds can get something, anything going here. They had back to back two out singles from Votto. And Votto's really was just a little check swing flare into left field. Frazier hit a bullet in the left. Air strike three called to Lamar. And ever since then, the only two Reds base runners have come on a one out walk today. Jesus and a two out walk in a third to Votto. Ooh. That's a pretty good looking curveball right there. He comes in with a fastball and starts this inside and buckles Lamar and gets a called strike. That curveball has been about his best friend. Look at the batting average against on the three different pitches that Youngman throws. And a 284 fastball batting average, but down to 145 when you're talking about trying to hit that curveball. Change up pretty doggone good, too. Yeah. I mean, all those numbers are actually very good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it all adds up at the end of the day. Opponents coming into the game tonight are hitting 232 against Taylor Young. Well, I mean, and you can't scout him with a radar gun because here he is throwing 91 miles an hour. And we've seen a lot of pitchers out there throwing a lot harder and backing up third base a lot more. All right, I want to ask you another question because you're getting into a lot of interesting stuff here tonight. Let's face it. I mean, you know, this game is two nothing, and there's really much not much going on. You talk all the time, and a lot of baseball people talk all the time about how we, we being everybody involved in baseball, are basing too much of the scouting by what the radar gun says, and how there are so many pitchers in high school. Your son, for an example, outstanding high school pitcher, now collegiate pitcher. But not the hardest throwing guy in the world. Mm -hmm. um, you've seen a lot of guys he's pitched against and pitched with that aren't blowing the radar gun up 
you know, 92, 93 as a, as a 17 or 18 year old. And then beyond in the college, 95, 96, 97. If all of us say that that's going on too much, and you're not the only one. I mean, we hear it from general managers. We hear it from scouts. We're putting too much stock in the radar gun. Why does this business continue to do it? Because it's easy to, to show that a, a kid who throws harder is going to have initial better success than a kid that doesn't throw hard. I mean, you have to have the rest of the package. I mean, there, there's a breaking ball right there. I mean, that's how good a breaking ball that is, that you got Brandon Phillips swinging a one that is a 56-footer. I, I don't know if there, there's any reason except that it stands to common sense that the kid who throws harder will have more success just because he throws hard. But I think the emphasis on it has gotten to the point where a lot of times coaches have become almost, they've got blinders on and you can see a kid pitch and you almost have to yeah, my advice to young pitchers is this if you really love baseball stick with it long enough until you are a fully grown mature man to find out how good you can really be because if you give it up at 18 because you're not throwing hard who knows what you're going to be when you're 23 mm -hmm. but the key is to try to find a place to play in the meantime well, after being embarrassed on that first strike in the at bat, Phillips waits for something he likes a little better, namely a fastball, and rips it in the left field for a base hit. Is Brandon asking for that ball? Oh, no, 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 no. He's asking for something else. I'm sorry. He's asking for something from the dugout. Yeah, my question is, if you're Taylor Youngman or Jonathan Lucroy, and you had Brandon Phillips swinging at a pitch the way he did on that breaking ball, why in that at bat would you even think about throwing him a fastball? I mean, until he shows you that he's going to make the adjustment, why would you make the adjustment first? Now Brian Pena reds down 2 nothing here in the fifth. Brandon takes off, throw to second by Luproy, and Brandon is safe. Well, he had a huge jump. I mean, Youngman never even made him stop. Youngman came to the stretch, and Brandon was bouncing off. Watch him there. One ball, one strike on Brian Pena. Phillips dancing around. Out at second base. That's now 18 stolen bases and 20 tries for Brandon Phillips. Well, if you're Brian Pena, you got to figure, even with a base open at first, you are getting something to hit in this at bat. Joey Votto on deck. They seem to walk him every time he comes up, so... I'm sure the young man wants to come after Pena, and if he's going to give up the base hit here, Pena's going to be the half the guy that's going to do it. Three balls in a strike. Well, this is where the Reds have really really been scuffling runner in scoring position two outs their team batting average is 177 the league isn't all that much better at 232 but 
177 leaves a lot of runners on base, leaves a lot of coaches and managers shaking their heads, thinking what could have been with a key hit in the right time. And this will be the final out of the inning. We go to the bottom of the fifth, still 2 0 Brewer. to get a Reds ticket and an exclusive commemorative baseball featuring an MLB All-Star Game logo. Purchase your All-Star Monday's ticket package today by visiting Reds.com slash Monday. I'm Jim Day just beside the Reds dugout. Let's update you on how McCoy, the Hall of Fame writer, we told you that he was uh, had a bit of a medical scare and indeed he had surgery last night. Now how has publicly put on his Facebook page so we feel comfortable enough to tell you that he had a 99% blockage in his right carotid artery, a very serious situation. In fact, his doctor said he's one lucky man to be walking around. But how came through the surgery? Well, they told him that he's got to rest for about a week, and then after that could return to Great American Ballpark soon after that. So how? I know you're probably watching. Get well soon. We'll see you, buddy, at the ballpark. Glad everything went well with the surgery. Here, here to that, Jim Day. How we love you, buddy. We can't wait till you get back. I mean, Great American Ballpark is just not the same. Yeah. Without him at the ballpark. That's yeah, like his home away from home. Yeah. And he makes everybody else feel right at home. Well, you know, you think about that town of Dayton and, and the fact that the city doesn't have its own Major League Baseball team. There's a swing and a miss to begin the inning. And yet, you think about the writers that have come out of that town that have covered the Reds that are in the Major League Baseball writers' wing of the Hall of Fame. How McCoy's in it, Ritter Collette's in it, Cy Burek's in it. Bucky Walters, a great writer, used to come down all the time and cover the games. Uh, I mean, Bucky Albers, I beg your pardon. You know, they. they it really is amazing. I've known all those guys since I was uh, just a little kid. And of course, Hal's still going strong. I think Bucky's still covering a lot of UD sports up there. I don't know if he's working full time anymore. Oh, what a terrific guy. Great smile. Fun to be around.
Now, rochelle has got seven of them in the books already and 13 strikeouts his last time out. And he's got the pitcher up here with a pretty good opportunity to get number eight. There, there it is. is. Yep. Well, the first two batters that he faced came around to score in the first inning. He struck out one in that inning, and he has struck out at least one in every inning since. There's the change up to get a strikeout. He's got the breaking ball working very nicely against right handers, and even a fastball that he'll run up and in. Well, you got to like what you see with Iglesias. Oh, boy, do you ever. You know, I don't know if I ever liked Kyle McCoy, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah, you know, when I was trying to make the Reds as oh, a, a walk-on player, go. I gave up back-to-back -back doubles in the first game I ever pitched in spring training. And he wrote in an article that day, among uh, other pitchers that we'll probably never see or hear from again. I was on that list. I'm waiting for you to come back, Hal. I owe you one. Get wow. back soon, will you? Boy. I've changed my mind too. go further by Meyer find more for a healthier you and Meyer and by Cincinnati Children's ranking third in the country on the US News and World Report's best children's hospitals in America some of the youngsters enjoying the the trim down Bernie's dugout and slide and all the kids and families watching over at Cincinnati Children's a special hello to all of you we hope you've had a great day and pray it's a better one tomorrow well, here we are. Reds have three hits. No runs. Joey Votto, a, a single in a short left field back in the first inning, and then drew a walk his last time up. Had a good pitch to hit right there. Four. Fastball and fouls it back. Trying to hit that ball into the lake. And that's a long way from here. With this kind of swing, he might be able to get it there. For those of you that have not been to Milwaukee, this ballpark is not a downtown ballpark. It's not many miles out of downtown, but it's, you know, its own sort of isolated area off the freeway, huge parking garage. I mean, the uh, parking area around the ballpark. Same property, basically, where Old County Stadium used to be. Huge tailgating set up here. And they take full advantage of it. See the numbers of Jim Day. We're going to get back to Jim Day about Joey Votto. And, you know, Jim, you were starting to tell us before the game about what it is in your conversation with, with Joey about uh, this ballpark. Now, he comes here a lot playing inside the National League Central Division. So, 
you know, the Reds are pretty much guaranteed every year playing anywhere from nine or ten games a season here, but Jenny Thin, Jim, anything in particular? He's now on base for the third time. Well, he's like a lot of players that come here. They the hitter's background is one of the best in baseball. And the, they talk about the sight lines. Even Jay Bruce has talked about the sight lines here. That it's uh, particularly easy, easier, I should say. See the ball. That giant hitter's background. You don't always get that big of a background that's solid black like that. They like it. And now Todd Frazier representing the tying run. Thank you, Jim. Frazier a single in the left field, fouled out to Lind. His last time up, we're in the top of the sixth inning. The Reds on the short side of a two-nothing game. Yeah, that leadoff walk has got the Brewer bullpen up and going. High pop up on a 1-0 fastball. One out. That sounded good. Didn't miss it by much. Jimenez cranking it up down there, left-handed, getting ready most assuredly should they need him in this inning to face a left-handed batter, Jay Bruce. Runner takes off. And Votto is safe. So that's Joey's eighth steal of the year. Been thrown out twice. That just seems like Youngman really doesn't pay a lot of attention. I mean, he throws over when the Brewers tell him to throw over, but he's got a kind of a long, deliberate delivery to the plate, and the Reds are trying to take advantage of it. One and one on AU Hanio Suarez. One out, Votto in scoring position in a breaking ball. What's well, a nice job by Lucroy, basically diving out of his crouch position to keep that one from getting away and advancing Votto on to third. in the inning. Well, I thought he could probably get it. Obviously, figuring that he's read the number of moves and he's got his pocket picked. And Bono was slow to get up. No trainer down there uh, tending to him right now. Looks like Paul Assard, the Reds' lead trainer, is just standing up right in front of him. So hopefully, uh, no big deal for Joey Votto. Boy, it's been a battle tonight for Taylor Youngman. Next pitch will be 100. Here we are, just not even completed the sixth inning yet. But he has battled and battled to the point where he's not given up the Reds one run. He's only given up three hits. But that's the story of his night. Three two pitches. He has run the count full. 
on a pile of hitters tonight. When he's had to make a pitch, he has made the pitch. The Reds just stumbling along here tonight. Thursday night. That's right. This Thursday night. Jim Harbaugh makes his debut as head coach of his alma mater. The Michigan Wolverines travel to Utah to take on the Utes. And the only place to see it is on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Coming up. Well, they're already fired up around football around these parts. They love their Green Bay Packers. In fact, they're playing a preseason game tomorrow night is down the road in Green Bay taking on the Philadelphia Eagles tomorrow night for some Bengals will be at Paul Brown Stadium tomorrow night against the Chicago Bears Jonathan Lucroy Ryan Braun Adam Lind against Rysel He's retired 14 in a row. The first five hitters of the game. Brewers scored two runs on two hits and two walks. They have not had a single base runner since then. Iglesias is fanned eight. That one nearly hit Lucroy 2-0. Lucroy knocked in the game's first run after a leadoff walk to Jeanette in the first inning. Jeanette scored all the way from first base on a double to left center field by the Milwaukee catcher. That's a good pitch right there. 2-0 pitch. That's a pitcher strike. Well, what Iglesias has are pitches that go in different directions. He's got a slider that goes away from right-handers. He's got a fastball with a tremendous amount of run that comes inside. So he can he can pitch at both sides of the plate, and he does pitch at both sides of the plate. Never gets into a habit of going back to the same spot over and over and becomes predictable. Hit off the end of the bat foul two and so two. You, uh, on successive pitches you have one hit off the of thumbs and then the other hit off at the very end of the bat. And look for a guy that doesn't get frustrated at the plate very often looks frustrated. As he walks out of the batter's box. Two runs two hits for Milwaukee. No runs, three hits for the Reds. Iglesias. 
Struck him out, and that's nine of them for Rysel. Boy, he sells that changeup just like it's a fastball, and that's the whole key to it. I mean, you come whipping through there, and you kill the speed of it with your grip. And that's fastball arm speed, and a pitcher comes in about 10 miles an hour slower. That could have even been a slider that didn't really slide very much, but got him with the speed change. Now Ryan Braun is walked and grounded out to shortstop. Breaking ball. Steer like right one at the knees. We talk all the time. It's just. It's incredible. How much Iglesias. Looks like. El Duque. Orlando Hernandez mm -hmm. in his wind up. The way he stands when looking in to get the sign from the catcher. Of course, uh, El Duque came over not until he was just past his 30th birthday. Defecting from Cuba. So, you know, the Yankees got some good years out of him. So did the White Sox. Pitched in Arizona a little bit. And he put together a very nice career for a guy who started his major league career after his 30s. Here Iglesias is far younger. And I would imagine... This is exactly what El Duque looked like when he was Iglesias' age. Look at that pitch. How do you not get that? Man. I mean, where was that ball? Trying to get him a chase down and away, and Braun doesn't do it. You can tell some of these Brewer hitters here. They're scratching their heads a little bit. Watching this young man and the kind of groove he's on. Three balls, two strikes. He glacius to Braun. And a tapper to the shortstop. This young man is something to watch. Sixteen straight batters set down by Iglesias since a single by Davis, which made it two nothing. Five batters into the game. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing there is you see pitches per inning in the fourth and fifth inning. He struck out two batters in each of those innings. So you're doing it with extreme efficiency. Unlike Youngman, his counterpart, who is winning the ball game two to nothing, Iglesias is. Barely working up a sweat out there. Well, you saw that that second inning. And the low number of pitches as well. Struck out two in that inning as well. Two. Now here's Lynn, though for two is popped up to left and grounded out to Votto. The Iglesias a strike away from his fifth consecutive perfect inning. And the 0-2 to Lynn. And that'll put it into that. 0-2 pitch and just hung out there a little bit of breaking ball. And a single dumped into right center field. So it's the first time in a long time now where Iglesias pitches out of the stretch. You've got to go back to the first inning. Now this is the reason why when pitchers take the mound between innings and they're warming up for the inning to get ready to begin that you always take a few pitches out of the stretch. So it's not been a half an hour since you've been out of the stretch. You've just done it a couple of minutes ago as you were warming up. Lynn not going anywhere. And Davis looked like he went around. He did strike one. Uh, this is the most aggressive hitter in that Brewer lineup.
Rockies and the Pirates tied at three in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Nationals lose again. They fall tonight to the Miami Marlins four to three. And things in the nation's capital are starting to get a wee bit uneasy. We'll have to find out how the New York Mets have done tonight. Unlike our ballpark at Great American Ballpark, you can look out on the big board and you see every score around both leagues at one time. Here they periodically flash up three at a time. Iglesias will handle it. And that is the inning. Iglesias at the end of six, trailing two nothing. Jonathan Lucroy, two batters in. It's one nothing. Three batters later, after another walk, it was a single by Davis to make it two nothing. The Brewers would not have another base runner until just a moment ago. 16 straight retired by Iglesias, and here he is through six innings tonight. Very low pitch count, certainly manageable pitch count. He has struck out nine. And yet he trails 2 nothing, and the night is over for the Milwaukee starter Taylor Youngman. He goes six innings really battled tonight shows you what he's made of allows three hits and no runs. And now Jeremy Jeffress who's finally starting to live up to his uh, potential will take over on the mound. Well one of the reasons why he's living up his potential he's beginning to throw the ball over the plate with more frequency. Former first round pick by the Brewers in 2006. Then he got traded away. Went to Kansas City in a Zach Granke deal in 2010. From there, his contract was purchased by Toronto from the Kansas City Royals in 2012. And then a couple of years later, the Royals just made him a free agent. So when he did not have a job come April of this year, that's when he signed as a free agent deal with the, the Brewers. And Now he's in the big leagues. Well, he had some off-field issues, which certainly didn't help him trying to maximize his uh, given talents. Uh, he was one failed drug test away from being out of here, I think, for the rest of his career. Yeah. And when you're blessed with that kind of talent. Bobbling is Jeanette. Cruz thrown out to start this seventh inning. Showed you that uh, Logan Schaefer takes over in center field. 
Santana moves from center to left. Chris Davis taken out of the game. We're talking about the New York Mets. They are tied going into the top of the ninth inning at home against the Boston Red Sox. With the Nationals loss tonight, if the Mets beat Boston, that would be a stunning seven and a half game lead for the Mets over Washington in the National League's Eastern Division. Would also be eight in a row for the Mets. Two big games coming up later tonight. Cubs and the Dodgers from Dodger Stadium. Cardinals and the Giants from AT&T Park. Of course, we're getting into the time of the year where for any and all contenders, every night might not be a must-win night, but every night's a big night. And we'll see that front and center our next stop on this road trip. Because I would imagine, even though it will be Monday and Tuesday nights, a Wednesday afternoon in Chicago, that that place will be jumping. Shot into right field, a base hit. One out single by De Jesus. Second time Yvonne's been on base tonight. A walk and now a single. Ryan Lamar has struck out swinging and struck out looking. Jeremy Jeffress on the relief of Youngman, who struck out five, walked three. Skip Schumacher stands in the odd deck circle. Unfortunately, that's where we are with the Reds right now, seemingly every time in particular. I mean, it's a lot of guys. It's not just Iglesias. As LeCur is ready in the bullpen. Ask Anthony DiSclefani about lack of support. We talked a little while ago about his last two starts, losing 2 1, and yesterday, 1 0. run the Dodgers scored was on a round ball double play five of those turned in the game yesterday by the Reds one off a franchise record one ball and two strikes yeah these Scafani and Iglesias would have a lot to talk about if they could find a common language to communicate with each other in the Reds have scored one run total in the last three starts that Iglesias has had he lost to Kansas City 3 to 1 and then he lost to Arizona 4 nothing. That was a game into which he struck out 13. One and two on Lamar. Busted back. And the double play will end the inning. One hit, none left. Milwaukee bats last of the seventh with a 2 nothing lead.
Things ago when he was on the base pass, stole a, a base. And one came up a little wincing after this, and then, Tom, you had noticed once he was uh, picked off going to third base, it was kind of an awkward slide. Here you see it right here, where he came up short. And I can tell you the next half inning when he went to the field, he was kind of wincing like this and shaking out both legs the whole time and never looked comfortable. And then when they came back to the dugout to hit, he called over one of the trainers. They went back into the clubhouse. And at the last minute came back out and took the field. But just I've watched this guy play hundreds of games just watching him in the field. There's definitely something that is discomforting him right now. Well, got to hope for the best. I know Jim you'll catch up with Joey after the game down in the uh, Reds clubhouse. And so. Hopefully nothing serious. Well, with the number eight hitter, Lamar, bouncing into the double play, ending the top of the inning, it gives Rysel Iglesias one more inning on the mound and one more chance if he can finish the inning of his team still getting him a win. This ball driven into deep right center field. And it's 3 nothing on the home run by Santana. We said as a big man that he likes that right center field as his power slot. And boy, does he go down and after that pitch. I get used to seeing him because if he stays healthy, all word is that he will be around for a while and be a Productive power hitter for the Brewers if he continues on the pace that he has started throughout his professional career. Herrera tapping down to third. That's a fourth hit allowed by Riceli Glacius. During this run in the month of August, we showed you earlier the opponent's batting average against 140, what was it, 143, 145 Five. in the month of August, 145. The lowest among all pitchers in the league. He has not allowed more than four hits in a game since July the 27th. He just allowed his fourth hit tonight. And the most runs he's allowed in a game. This is the second time he's allowed three runs. Everything else, two, one, or none. Two and one on the shortstop. Segura, who's popped the second and struck out. The Iglesias spot will lead off the top of the eighth inning, so this will be it for him. His team has managed a total of four hits against Taylor Youngman and... Jeremy Jeffress. You know, we've spent so much time, Chris, talking about rookie pitcher after rookie pitcher after rookie pitcher and the natural ups and downs that you're going to have when you run young guys out there. You know, we've not talked a lot about. The lack of offense from this team. Well, and let's really, face it, you know, they, they 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 traded Bird, but I mean, Bird was here for quite a while. He spent the, some time on the disabled list. Hamilton's been here all year long until just recently when he got hurt. It's a pretty veteran laden team as far as your position players are concerned. Well, if you just start sorting out the amount of money you have allocated around this roster, the majority of it is to the everyday player. Yeah. Minority of it goes to 
you know the pitching staff especially the starting rotation when you're all rookies you're not making very much money although Iglesias is on a. A higher than rookie scale. But you're right I mean it's the veterans that have been around a while and that have been around. That are just going through a prolonged slump that are just. You know and then after a while the whole team begins to to feel it. You know you look up and you're down three runs in the first couple of innings tonight they're down two runs in the first. And, and it just gets to be tiring for everybody and frustrating if you're the manager like Brian Price. I mean what do you do. You can't Paul call another meeting you've had plenty of those. You have the talent on the field that matches up with the team that you're playing. But you're not really sure from night to night what you're going to get out of a rookie pitcher although with Iglesias you're pretty. Pretty confident. But this is the night this is like having this is your Johnny Cueto on the mound right now. Bruce will run this one down so Iglesias seven innings of four hit three run baseball. He strikes out ten batters tonight. But his team is not dead at the scoreboard. Iglesias, this young man, has really been exciting for this franchise to watch him take the ball every fifth day and how good he has been. Well, he still has a chance that the Reds can make some noise, and the Brewers are going to go to their bullpen after the pinch hitter Schumacher was announced. They've summoned the left hander Will Smith. So, this will be our skyline chili call to the bullpen. We'll be back. In a moment.
Comes on from the Brewers bullpen taking over for Jeffress who worked a scoreless seventh. We're in the top of the eighth inning and the Brewers with a three nothing lead and Schumacher looks at a strike. Guy's been a real workhorse 78 games last year 60 games now make it 61 so far this season including tonight. Very good ERA at 2.5 it's a good breaking ball to get ahead on two. Good pinch hitting numbers this year for Schumacher. More pinch hits than any other player in the league. Of course, more pinch hit at bats than anybody else in the league. Top of the order next. So Schumacher, Phillips, Pena. Any noise from that trio, and then you get Devado and Frazier. Reds down by three. We're in the eighth. You know, Skip's not really sure what he's going to do next year. Whether he will play, whether he will retire, where he will be, will be a free agent. I'm not. Sure. I think the Reds might have an option on Skip, and I think it may be a mutual option. But he's not totally guaranteeing himself that he will continue to play. And strike three called, and that's out number one here in the Reds' eighth. Well, not to say there aren't a lot of them, but you know, Schumacher is one of the the few. Veterans on this team with you know, family. Yeah. Reds are so young or have players on their team that are veterans that are still young men that have just started families in the last year or two. Schumacher has two young children, but they're not infant children. They're young boys that, he, uh, that I think both one boy, one girl. Yep. And uh, he really has a strong desire to be close to them yeah. as they grow up. It's and, a tight knit you know, group. To a lot of people who can't answer the question, you know, how much is enough? I mean, he feels like he has enough and doesn't need to work if he doesn't have to and can just kind of call it quits and be a family guy. Lives very modestly. Yes, he does. He, him and his wife and his kids, he just did their, you can just tell when you're around them, uh, occasionally they'll make a trip with the team or fly back with the team from a city. And uh, you can just tell by being around them that uh, that's, that's a tight group. Base hit into right field by Brandon. So you got Pena, and we'll see if Votto gets a shot at it in the inning or Frazier. But, you know, the other part about it is, Chris, you know, when you start talking to, to players through the years, I don't know, maybe you dealt with a little bit of this. You know, a guy like Schumacher, you know somebody's going to offer him a job. Now, whether or not he's back with the Reds remains to be seen because he's still a good player. I mean, he's a guy that could help a lot of teams. Well, he's leading the league in pinch yeah. hits. And I he mean, play everywhere. There's a spot for somebody like that, no doubt. And so, you know, sometimes you say, you know, if I walk away from it now, and like I said, his kids are, are, are old enough to know he's a baseball player, but, but they're not really old enough to know he's a baseball player. One of the really great things about being a baseball player when you, your son or your daughter get to be a certain age where they can occasionally come to the ballpark is a little more challenging for a girl than it is a boy for obvious reasons inside of a a men's clubhouse of a baseball clubhouse. But nonetheless, um, players bring their kids earlier. I mean, who had more fun with his son at the ballpark regularly than David Weathers? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sometimes when you think a guy wants to spend more time with his family, if he keeps playing, he can spend more time with his kids by taking on some of these cool things before it's time to really call it quits. Well, except in that part of the baseball season that overlaps the school year. Yeah. Well, I certainly hope he's back here next year. I don't know how you can't be a fan of Skip Schumacher. Although I tell you, he, he had high hopes of playing on some good teams here with the Reds, and that obviously has just not worked out. Because he was on good teams in St. Louis, and his one year with the Dodgers on a good team there.
Two and two on Brian Pena. Started two and laid off. Three balls, two strikes. Yeah, Brian doesn't really get all that many plate appearances batting right handed. Batting average significantly lower right handed than left handed, but. Has not shown a lot of power from either side of the plate. Three two pitch. And here it comes. Ball four. Sobato will bat representing the tying run. Smith has come in and after striking out Schumacher has allowed a single and now a walk. It's a good at bat right there by Brian Pena. I'll tell you though, I. If I'm a pitching coach, Chris, I, I don't know how these guys do it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so infrequent that anybody is challenged anymore. I mean, really called out at this level of baseball. But when your team is ahead three to nothing, and you know Joey Votto is standing in the on deck circle, and there's a runner on base already. How in the world can you walk Brian Payne? Well, yeah, that, that I mean, how can that happen? And obviously Smith is a guy who's had a lot of success. Last couple of years. Well Votto going to ground into a double play. It doesn't matter. So the inning is over. And off we go to the bottom of the eighth. Ballpark Saturday, September 12th. All fans, I mean, all fans in attendance receive a Pete Rose Stars of the Queen City Bobblehead presented by Queen City Sausage. So, hurry, tickets are going fast, and they really are. Purchase your tickets right now. Call the Reds 513 381 Reds, or you visit your select Kroger locations, or of course, Reds.com slash tickets. Super Saturdays, the Pete Rose Bobblehead coming up September the 12th.
Colin Ballester picked up his first major league win. In over three years. There's a bunt foul. That was a game where the Reds came all the way back from being behind 5-0. They had the 10 runs in the sixth inning, and it was ironic because the last time he won a game was when the Detroit Tigers, whom he was pitching for, came back from a big deficit with a 12-run inning to win a game. And he got the win in that game. In the hole, Suarez plants. Good throw. One away. As promised early in the game, time for our Data Strong Fan Photo of the Night. You can send yours. Hashtag Ohio Data Strong Fan. Brought to you by T Mobile. That's a good one. With Mr. Redlegs, Cassidy, thank you. So one to get away against Ballastin. And here comes Jonathan Lucrell. Iglesias walked two batters, punched out ten, allowed four hits, three runs, and seven innings. Base hit right field. Two and zero oh on Ryan Braun, one out single by Lou Croy. Brewers batting in the home half of the eighth inning with a three nothing lead in the first of three. With a half game separating these two teams in the division standings. Alistair ready short lead over there by the catcher Luke Roy and a fastball right down the middle. That's what you were talking about earlier Chris Welsh that count on three and a run by by the folks that weren't with us earlier the count this year in baseball. It's really stunning you know the count uh, on three and oh the batting average is three sixty seven. The Reds are hitting seven seventy eight as a team. They've they're seven for nine on 3 0 counts and they've hit a home run. I think it was Todd Frazier to hit a 3 0 home run. Some teams have hardly any at bats at all. I mean, it's the only count where you're pretty much guaranteed. 99% of the time, anyway, you're getting a fastball. Some hitters, however, just simply not comfortable. 
going after it on a 3 0 count. No action in the Reds bullpen. Looks like I'm missing somebody out there. They're going to leave in Ballister to face uh, Lynn. Of course, oh. you know, the Reds have had Manny Parra on the disabled list multiple times this year. So, you know, the only left hander they have in their bullpen is the closer. A role as Chapman. That certainly is an area the Reds are going to have to address. And I mean front and center right now in the offseason. There are other areas, obviously, but they have to find a dependable left-hander down in that bullpen. It's certainly not from a lack of trying. I mean, they gave Sean Marshall a long-term contract. He virtually has not pitched since the day he signed it mm -hmm. because of injuries to his shoulder. And with Manny Parra. The first year he was great when he came over from these Brewers, but then was given a two year contract and and over the last two years has just missed a pile of time. One ball and two strikes on Lynn. Shane Peterson stands in the on deck circle. That is the pitcher spot that is due up next. LaCure is now throwing again in the bullpen. He was up earlier. And when the Reds had a lack of a left-hander in the bullpen, it was always Sam LeCure who would be so-called the left-handed specialist, even though he's a right-handed pitcher. Kind of a jack-of-all-trades down there when Sam was up here and being used a lot. Broken bat foul ball. If you're wondering what that stuff is, that's the Manny Moda stickum. Comes in a little bit of like a roll or a tube. And I mean, if you get it on your hands, it is really hard to get off your hands. Really? Yeah. It's kind of a cleaner version of pine tar. Mm. Well, this is trouble. Brewers blowing this one wide open. Two more runs scored. Five nothing. This will be our Miller time moment brought to you by Miller Light. Red still very much in it at three nothing. Mighty tall task now after a single and a walk. Two run double by Lynn. Well, they started with the two nothing lead. The Brewers did. They tacked on one in the seventh, a couple here in the eighth, and Brian Price has seen enough of Colin Ballister, and he will go and get Sam LeCure out of the bullpen. With one out in the eighth inning. We'll take a break. Tell you all about Sam when we come back.
Red Bulls take on DC United 7 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1 sponsored by Audi. Sam LeCure comes on, two runs home in the Milwaukee eighth. Brewers in front, 5-0, and Shane Peterson will be the batter against Sam. Hard to believe only three games this year for Sam LeCure. He did not make the team out of spring training. And it took him a while to work his way back. Especially when you consider over the last four years for Sam LeCure, 62 games last year, 63 the year before that. And then 48 and 43, including four starts in 2011. That was really his first full season in the major leagues. Sam has retired 14 of the 15 batters since being brought up from the minor leagues. Three hitless appearances. Only batter who's reached against him in his five total innings was a walk. And I mean, he's coming in throwing strikes. That one didn't miss by much. He's in front. One ball and two strikes on Peterson. Those are the numbers. 13 and 14. Sam is such a valuable member of this pitching staff, as Chris mentioned, going back to 2011. So valuable. Gone swinging is Peterson. Oh, that slow curveball for Sam LeCure gets a lot of chases. Heck, I'm not sure he even threw one strike in the zone against Peterson. Just a little bit low to Domingo Santana. Chris talked before this game ever started about the opposite field power of this young man. And lo and behold, his last time up, he launched one over the, the wall in the deepest part of right center field. This young man has a total of four hits and three of them home run since coming to the Brewers. Here's a 3 1 on Santana from LeCure. Ball four.
you know, we televise these games seemingly every night. It's not every night, but just about every night. All the, what, 17 games a whole year right here on Fox Sports Ohio, and a lot of those are still on television on some various network or another. And, you know, we're so used to seeing that shot of Brian Price. We see it dozens of times every single game. Chris, you've been around baseball a long time. Brian Price uh, should have been a professional poker player because he rarely shows the anguish and the frustration and the disappointment. And it's all of those motions uh, and so many more when you're going through the kind of season the Reds are going through right now. It's been a tough year. I mean, to come out of spring training and have a ball club that was fully expected to compete for the division title and be set by a little bit of injury along the way, no doubt, but other teams have dealt with that too. Look at what the Cardinals have gone through as far as injury, but bottom line is that this team just has not performed, period, to the point at which you end up trading away your two most dependable pit starting pitchers in the rotation. By the end of July, you're starting all rookies the rest of the year. And the veterans that you're paying a lot of money to and you expect the big things out of are simply not cutting it when it comes to getting runs driven in. And as a manager, the bottom line is the bottom line. I mean, this isn't a ball club that is rebuilding. This isn't a team that has a five-year plan to get back in contention. This is a team that is expected to win and win now, and if not now, they will expect to win next year. So that's where the bottom line is the bottom line. You take it home every night when you're the manager, wins and losses. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot longer year when you're taking home 21 more losses or 22 more losses than the nights you're going home with wins. Mm -hmm. You go over it in your mind. A hit here. A sacrifice bunt properly executed there. Maybe moving a runner over. And then you start second guessing yourself. Should I brought this guy in to face this other hitter instead of pinch hitting here? Should I have done this instead? A story came out in the paper today about uh, you know, Brian Price for next year. He has a contract next year. And I guess some of the local scribes uh, were able to catch up with both Walt Jockety and Bob Castellini about future 2016 in regard to Brian Price. Here's a pop up in a short left field. That'll end the inning. And now he has to answer those questions today. Reds will bat in the ninth, down 5 0.
Oktoberfest will be celebrating German Heritage Night. Plus the first 20,000 fans receive a red stein thanks to Hollywood Casino. For tickets call 381-REDS. Visit select Kroger locations. Or log on to Reds.com slash tickets. All right. Reds will bat here in the top of the ninth inning. They've managed five hits in the game, all five of them singles. Rysel Iglesias on the hook to get a loss on another game. His, what would this be? His sixth consecutive start where he gives you six or more. His sixth consecutive start where he allows four hits or fewer. His sixth consecutive start where he allows three runs or fewer and he is in danger of losing yet again on a night where he strikes out 10 coming off his last start where he punched out 13 and to get a little work I mean the Brewers are only a half game better than the Reds so their closers not getting to work out regularly so they'll bring on Francisco Rodriguez Well, the Rod is in his third season or second season with the Brewers. He had 66 games last year. That led or finished 66. That led the league last year in games finished. 44 saves in 2014. He's got 30 right now. Not a save situation. Five runs up. He's had as many as 62. That's when he was back in his All-Star days with the Angels. Well, you know, the, the Reds have not had you know, much to get excited about offensively, obviously, when you have five hits and no runs. I mean, it really comes down to the way they're going right now, the few chances, much like the game yesterday against the Dodgers, the two or three chances you're getting in a game. And if you don't take advantage of them, there's just nothing there. They had Suarez batting the first inning with two on and two out. He was retired. You had Votto back with two on and one out in the eighth. Double play. Well, winning is contagious and so is losing. And when you come into a ball game having lost 12 in the last 13, and you lose 10 in a row, and you get one win and you think all right you know that they're going to build a little momentum and then turn around and get swept over the weekend by the Dodgers. And now you're battling the Brewers for fourth place. It's. Not a good spot. We've seen teams like this over the years and. Not a lot of flow going on and it's hard to get going individually because you're trying to find out what the real motivation is and all you can do is continue to go out there and play hard. You play for a little pride. And you play for yourself and you play for what you hope that you can do for this ball club on a day, game to game basis. So now Jay Bruce. Russo for three. And it's ball one. Out of nearly 28,000 here tonight, 27,632 on a Friday night in Milwaukee. And a number of those have already made their way to the exit gate. But those here, many coming to their feet, some in the front row just sitting down and, and relaxing, enjoying the game.
Two and two on Jay Bruce. Rodriguez a perfect ninth inning. And the Brewers shut out the Reds. That's back to back games. The Reds have been shut out. They scored one the day before that. So Youngman gets a win. He's eight and five. Iglesias, a tough luck loser at three and six. We'll get started an hour earlier tomorrow. That'll be 6.30 Reds live tomorrow night. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Five nothing. Brewers win. <laughs> 